Hi. This morning, actually, I'll try to share small things. Actually, we practiced this thing up for last, uh, what, two years ago or something like that. So uh, it, is, it is a very small study uh, in point of number of specimens we tested it, things like that. But as compared to that, a uh, land robe study. Land robe, they, they did a lot of specimens generating uh, that I think are based on the trust request. But we have only three different kinds of uh, specimens. And then each the, you know, specimen type has about uh, less than 20 data points. So whatever that is. So based on that practice, uh, we use it as that big existing spot was and then whether we just spot and swab and be can be applied for this SPR because of the mechanics in SPR and spot was. But I think that the size is very uh, well. So for this study, is uh, a lot of people actually involved. Actually, this idea is not coming from myself. It's coming from an AK, uh, from GM on the Shuming, and also Young Lee. Uh, those people that helped a lot. And then my student, John Lee, he did all the work. And then all this testing is performed by AEP. And the Cindy Jang uh, with their uh, colleagues did all the uh, testing. But we did our own analysis and then a little bit uh, make overnight this slide. That's all what we did. Okay, then uh, uh, this one is a little anchor provided me some camp template of sliders. So I was just trying to explain what we are doing actually I'm with the small fatigue group in, in, in the uh, University of Michigan Geoball. We're doing a lot of testing, especially on the joint uh, fatigue and do a little bit of CMF and also some strain control the fatigue test on the round of bar and also four point bending based the fatigue testing we are doing and we do a lot of FPA based uh, prediction activity we are doing it. And then uh, the thing is that this project is uh, that actually why we uh, start on working. Yeah, this is the, the, the thing we are uh, trying to correlate the test, testing and the prediction. So why we did this one, actually the main goal was this structure. So this is a punch, the shock shock structure is, is Aluminium, I mean, magnesium, magnesium, but this is the middle part is the testing magnesium. A different, the upper layer, lower layer, different way of manufacturing process. That is, but still magnesium. The Nimes model is all three is about the same, and poison bridge is also about the same. And then the T performance of joint also pretty much the same. But whatever that is, initially we had a practice testing on this at F, uh, G direction, y, F direction, and Y direction on this structure. And uh, we, had a, we had some uh, issue to predicting the life of the joint at the low rail, at upper rail, things like that. So make it specimen simple like this way, whether we do same process, what we usually doing it, and whether we can predict the life at here. So this part is, is a personal, we put the post of actually more like a half post of geometry of this specimen we get from upper rail. This upper rail is around this way and the bottom, the other side of here also that SPL as applies. So we cut uh, out of this real structure to make it in the three specimen. So sometimes that uh, uh, joint is not exactly in the mind at this in the example that is in the is all from the uh, two. So that is uh, happening. But we did matching exactly as what evidence we have. And then this part is that we put the TS specimen, but that is basically coming from cut it in the bottom here. So this part or this part we cut it, we cut it. So basically what we're using in the process of the structures, that's not what we're using. We need uh, testing results. EN approach, for example, EN or SN approach, you have this is some uh, material property or fatigue property, you can do it, but in the structure test, you need to join fatigue uh, data. So, 
catch thing is load versus live, so you have it, and that thing has to be converted into structured stress versus live. So using this structured stress versus live curve is your material card, or you see this material data for uh, encode, and then that using that curve we're predicting this. So do we do uh, tolerating this one? Is it doing good or we do something wrong? Or does it to learn what we are doing and then we try to apply it? So that is the main purpose of it. Uh, to do that, so creating a thing with testing into two, two kind of specimens. So this is the lab here and the port here, which is the dimension here. So mostly the thickness of this is about uh, two mil to two mil. So Three uh, unique uh, same thickness on it, and then the failure mode. So something most likely fail in this manner, but in the higher load or the tensile load, it could be sometimes it happens throughout this manner to happen. But as you would see, at uh, this the failure mode, at uh, these two things, uh, it's pretty similar to forward. And that is one reason we try to use the forward engine to for predicting the life of the SPR. Even actually, that this is a thing that the last failure mode it looks like this. It's such a little bit thicker, it's, it's good, but the thickness is thinner that sometimes it is very weird behavior. It's a bit much different from uh, uh, follow because it's between this head to the shade, there is the uh, friction there, it's aware it's happening. I don't know how much that contributes to real life, but we just ignore that part of it. So that is the one. And then another sometimes it's coming from failure studying the lower part. This is actually that, uh, what I said, that uh, initially the, the SPR is uh, cutting the material, making the fall. So something that edge of the fall looks like the initiation point of the crack and the point. So these two things, is what we just assume in the same as it's forward in failure. So this is the uh, I have. This, this is power, the pull out, and this is the crack like thing. So that is not a good like this. So this is the test result of this is cause kill, and that is the uh, lab shear thing. So always the separation because of the load thing, because this is a lot of liquid and geometry and the loading. So the, this one will only uh, have only our ratio is 0.1 because this is not a welding. This is uh, our ratio has some effect. This R point point three is is is, is point a little bit lower, lower than the that part. So what is in this data only we have uh, same low ratio. So this this I'm trying to show in you. I will not explain the much for this expert here, but this is the forwarding engine that the background of the how they drive the structure stress. Is using uh, uh, this, this concept and using this equation, they drive all things. And how do we represent in the that thing out of the ATM or CVAR? They do the different this is the ATM part of it, and then how they collecting the forces and moment at the nodal point, and how do we transfer them in the middle of that part? And then that is, it, it is some uh, uh, yeah, good geometry on that, the equation comes, something like that. I just copy and paste it from their manual. Without yeah, there is some equation, constant sign things. I think you you are working on the spot well that the thing is it has to be understood what the that's what it happens. But the thing is that this one is as it uh, 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 Land Rover people did it and they had an issue with it. There's no collecting it there. That's the main reason because of that this this kind of parameters. That that is something we have to deal with the different material and the sea thickness variation uh, is affecting the sea life. So they will so collect that all data in the one single line. We have to treat this one. But luckily, we didn't play anything on this one because our uh, small data tool has a same thickness, and then we did not have any issue with the scatter and then transferring. Uh, uh, Structure set, but uh, we did it in some different material. We did not with this project, but then we have some scatter, so we have to deal with this one. So right now, we're one of my students working on all the optimization process. 
topic to get it right the parameters to go up to more and more stuff. So that, especially in the, this is the bending cases, set due to bending and these categories are a lot, uh, they detect due to bending contributing a lot more than the simple uh, membrane set. So this we could do it that representing that a joint as ACM or C bar we do both ways. We did it both ways, but we represent only one result that is not more consistent. And so that is the case here. So uh, here, that's a, this is structure set versus light curve uh, as a collapsing degree as well. So of course the test results were pretty uh, uh, good. But it's a compared to Land Rover. Land Rover has their, their data is a lot of scattered because that's a more uh, variational set, especially geometry, see thickness different, things like that. So a lot, especially at CR involves testing a lot more uh, scattered different observers compared to flower. Especially if the thickness is thinner, it is more variation there. But in this case, we do not have that issue, so we have really reasonably good. So this one is, is now uh, we, we call it substructure assessment, but it, as I explained, it is cut it from real structures. So this one is as it's all AAP, uh, uh, get it this design of this fixture, so they tested it all. And this one is, as I said, it's coming from this part. It's the upper layer part, they cut it, they cut it, and they tested it, all those kinds of stuff. So we measure it, this actual geometric to uh, FDA model, so we measure the actual location of the joint and things like that. So exactly not, I mean, this is not exactly a straight line, but we do have to exactly what physical model has in the model. So and that one is it. And then this is another type of thing. So that this was a specimen that had come from the lab condition. This part we just cut it. But as you see, uh, some specimens they are at a joint, some specimens at a base material. So we I do not we do not really look at it this one. We're still using this one as EN approach we do predict very close to this uh, this testing result, but this is just uh, our focus was in the drawing of SCR, so we are not really looking at this one. So, so actually we tested uh, they tested a few more than this, but in actual comparison purpose so we only looking at this one. And even this one case, this one say that joint is a fail, but in the same time, the crack is happening in base material too. So the number of uh, prediction is based on only we consider only this one, and not really considering this part, you know, contribution of this part. But in the real test result, it's actually this plus this portion of it. So they may not be exactly the same thing we are comparing. No. So this is sort of the comparison of it. That this is uh, that is the uh, experimental result. This is the transition result, and then this is very uh, well correlated. Uh, other than on the this is the low cycle region, it is a little bit off, but it's. Um, we tried so many different ways, but it's still that thing. I have a little bit on, on, on the bottom on the short of light region, but it's that I do not exactly to try to explain. But overall, uh, considering that it's a CR uh, joint can be uh, predicted using a uh, power doing anything at this point. So as I said, still there is difference that the failure and the mechanics around that joint which is very different. So we need more study on this one, so how exactly we are presenting a mechanic point of view in, in at the SCL joint. So how to predict that joint uh, method you know, should be using it up. But at, at the meantime, uh, we're still utilizing anchor, I mean the destructive set approach using a, a power and then I think so, so of course we do. So that is the, uh, a summary of it and why we did it in this uh, tens of uh, black shear and hot steel uh, specimen uh, to test it for the SCR joint. And then using that one, we created a same curve.
basement structure stretches. And then we apply two uh, predict that a substructural uh, assessment that is overlaid as is going to look like is, is, is reasonably uh, uh, correlating the uh, prediction and then uh, testing results. And that's all I have. And uh, this is something, this is, this is was actually just pulled from uh, uh, a U.S. car uh, program, so that I, I don't know if that number is enough, probably not exactly right, but that uh, this doesn't mean it is uh, right or becoming energy as expensive. Okay, so that is all I have, and uh, if you have a question that I can answer.